I want you to think about the last chocolate that you tasted. What kind was it? Was it milk chocolate? Dark chocolate? A candy bar? Did you take your time tasting it? Or did you just wolf the whole thing down and then feel guilty about it? Okay. If you're like most people, it is likely that your relationship to chocolate is similar to the one that I had growing up as a kid in the San Francisco Bay Area. For me, chocolate was candy bars, Snickers and Hershey's and Nestle's Crunch. It was delicious, but it was never health food. Chocolate used to be bad for you. When I was 16, something very interesting happened to me. I moved to the Hawaiian island of Kauai, where my father's family, the Lydgates, are from, onto a farm where we started to grow chocolate. Yes, that's right, chocolate grows on trees. <laughs> the cacao tree, to be precise, and chocolate is made from the fermented seeds of the cacao fruit, called cacao beans. At first, we just grew the trees and produced a little bit of chocolate. Then we started to teach workshops on how to grow and process chocolate. And before too long, we grew these into an educational chocolate farm tour. And when I was just out of college, my full-time job was teaching visitors the history, botany, and horticulture of Theobroma cacao, the chocolate tree. Cacao originated in the Amazon region of South America, and to fully appreciate the influence of this remarkable plant, you have to remember that from ancient times, cacao beans were central to both the religion as well as the daily life of Mesoamerican cultures. The tree was central to their origin myths, and they worshipped it as a divine plant. The Mesoamericans also used cacao beans as money. Paleoeconomists have shown us that each bean was worth, in today's terms, about a dollar a piece. Spanish conquistadors, ransacking Montezuma's treasury in the 1520s, were disappointed to find that Montezuma's Fort Knox contained not silver or gold, but over one billion cacao beans. Drinking chocolate first reached the Western world in the 1500s, and with the addition of sugar, quickly became all the rage for the few who could afford it. Chocolate houses sprang up throughout Europe, and by 1600, if you were anybody important in Madrid or Amsterdam, Paris or London, you would go to a chocolate house to enjoy the stimulating properties of this novel brew. Coffee and later tea would also become popular in Europe, but compared to chocolate, they are both very late to the party. Chocolate's mood-improving and stimulating effects were so well-known throughout Europe that by the mid-1700s, when scientific names were first given to plants, the tree was awarded the title Theobroma, Greek for food of the gods. <clears throat> so, if chocolate was so venerated in European and in Mesoamerican society, then what happened? In the late 1800s, two entrepreneur industrialists, Milton Snavely Hershey in the US and John Cadbury in England, had huge success with a new kind of chocolate called milk chocolate. The addition of large amounts of milk powder and sugar meant that they needed less of the expensive cacao beans, which meant that they could charge a price so low that everyone could afford it. <clears throat> Also, the addition of all the milk and the sugar meant that the flavor of the cacao beans had less importance. And so, on the farmer's side, thousands of years of careful breeding for diverse flavors um, were disregarded in favor of trees with high yield and disease resistance. Slowly, heirloom chocolate was forgotten, replaced by the chocolate candy bar. This was industrial chocolate. Fast forward 100 years to the mid-1990s, when we began to see a resurgence in chocolate bar makers using the pre-industrial, 
small batch techniques of old Europe, all searching the globe for the highest quality cacao beans and seeking to discover the distinctive flavors of beans from a single origin or single estate. Collectively, this became known as the bean to bar movement. Today, bean to bar chocolate makers seek to create relationships with cacao farmers and are willing to pay more money for high quality beans, giving farmers a financial incentive to grow the tastiest varieties and produce a high quality crop. Now, this is very similar to what's happened in the coffee industry. Remember Folgers and Chock Full of Nuts? compared them to the coffee selection available today, or to microbrews, or to the wine industry, where the consumer has long been aware of the flavor and value of high quality products. And I have some really good news for you today. Chocolate is health food. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, it's really good for you. Milk chocolate candy bars do not count. <laughs> I'm sorry, most of the chocolate candy bars that we grew up with, actually only about 10% chocolate. The rest, the other 90%, milk powder, sugar, other stuff, not necessarily good for you. But dark chocolate, 60% or higher, is incredibly good for you. In fact, it is so good for you that you might want to eat one ounce of dark chocolate every day as a basic health maintenance and disease prevention strategy. That's right. Every day. Every day. Research has shown that regular dark chocolate consumption can improve cognitive function, can prevent cardiovascular disease, increases good cholesterol, lowers bad cholesterol, is filled with important micronutrients, things we need, things like iron, magnesium, selenium, and it has some of the highest concentrations of antioxidants of any food that we know of. In short, dark chocolate is one of the most powerful health foods that we have. Therefore, I propose that we change the way we think about chocolate take the chocolate out of the candy section in your mind and put it with the fine wines and cheeses, with the craft coffee, and all the things that we love in life. So now let's taste some delicious chocolate together. You've all got your chocolate tasting kits. They look something like this. Go ahead and open your tasting kit. Before you eat the chocolate, though, wait. You're going to need to do something like this. Wait to eat the chocolate. You might need to rip it to open it. Take out Chocolate number one, which is the oval-shaped chocolate with the indent. And before you eat it, wait, we're going to smell it first. Take out the oval-shaped chocolate with the indent. Everybody got it? Yeah. Now first, smell your chocolate. Appreciate its aroma, its bouquet. We're going we're gonna to pay attention to the flavor of this chocolate. First, smell it. Now, put the chocolate on your tongue and let it melt in your mouth. If your partner ate half of theirs, you can maybe split it with them. Let it melt on your tongue. So as it's now melting on your tongue, you're going to notice the texture of the chocolate. I want you to notice, is it smooth? How quickly does it melt? How does it feel in your mouth? All of these things are called the mouth feel of the chocolate. If you like, you can take very small sips of air to circulate the aroma and the flavor of the chocolate through your nose and tasting apparatus. And uh, you may begin to notice a delightful flavor of mm, a citrus. There's a bright, citrusy, fruity note in this chocolate. This chocolate was grown on the island of Madagascar, an origin famous for its fruity flavors. So as you enjoy that chocolate, let's talk about how to find really good chocolate. First, ask, where does this chocolate come from? If it doesn't say on the bar, they might not want you to know, and you probably don't want to know. This is true. Buy chocolate with fewer ingredients. Pure dark chocolate has only two ingredients, cacao beans and sugar. Some makers add a small amount of an emulsifier, soy lecithin, this is fine. Just watch out for things like vegetable oil and paraffin and anything that you can't pronounce. <laughs> Buy chocolate with a percentage marked on the bar. 60% means 60% cacao, 40% everything else. So the higher the number, the darker the chocolate. Many connoisseurs enjoy chocolate in the range of 65 to 
you want to pay more money for high quality chocolate and appreciate that you can get the very best chocolate in the world for $10 to $20 per bar. Now, compare that to the price you'd pay for the very best wine in the world or the very best cheese. Most of us enjoy buying a nice bottle of wine on a Friday night to bring home and share with friends. Now we have chocolate equal to that same quality that is worth sharing. And then where do I buy really good chocolate, Will? Tell me. Well, if you can't make it out to my farm in Hawaii, or you don't live in a city where there are chocolate specialty shops, the best place to buy bean-to-bar chocolate is online. All right, chocolate number two from your tasting kit. Take it out first, smell it. Smell the chocolate, yes. Notice its aroma. How is it different from chocolate number one? This one is a little bit more roasty, a little bit of a darker, darker flavor. It's a darker chocolate. Now, put it on your tongue and let it melt. And notice the mouthfeel of the chocolate. Compare it to chocolate number one. Is it smoother? Does it melt faster? Does it melt slower? Well, it's a little bit slower, doesn't it? And as it begins to melt, you may notice a wonderful flavor of coffee with a little bit of a cherry note. Really tasty dark chocolate here. So, oh, by the way, congratulations. Uh, you've eaten two chocolates, which means you've done something healthy today. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do it. Chocolate for health. It's really, really good for you. <laughs> there has never been a more exciting time for Bean to Bar chocolate from, from makers like Guitard in San Francisco, who've been using old world techniques for five generations, to Bean to Bar companies like Dandelion, Amano, and Manoa Chocolate, all making fantastic chocolate worth tasting. This is something that you will want to be a part of. And I am very excited to be here representing a new player in the chocolate growing world, the Hawaiian Islands. <laughs> Hawaii grows some delicious chocolate, and if you can find some, it's well worth tasting. So I don't need you to remember everything that I've said here today about chocolate, but the next time you want to get a chocolate bar, I want you to go out and buy a really good one and to take your time tasting it because fine dark chocolate is the most delicious health food on the planet. So let's change the way we think about chocolate for our health, for our well-being, and for our palates. And let's make sure that the kids of tomorrow know that chocolate is so much more than candy bars. Thank you.